Welcome to Adrian's Corner. I am Adrian. And I'm Mr. K. And this is definitely my corner. Black Mesa, one of the most ambitious video game fan projects ever, is finally finished, as The Verge.com stated so eloquently back in the beginning of March. And boy, were they ever right. They took the Mona Lisa of all first-person shooters, Half-Life a game which revolutionized the industry back in the late 1990s and gave it the makeover that every teenage prom video of the early 2000s could ever have dreamed for. Well, except for all the bugs, issues, and questionable design choices late in the game. There's a lot to love, and there's a lot to hate. It's everything Black Mesa, starting now. Black Mesa, a tale of two zens. The dev team decided to release the game as an early access without the final chapter available. Now this would be a crucial move as in the next five years, the team took what should have been about an hour's worth of gameplay to upwards of about three to four. Now while on one hand this provides them a chance to really delve into the alien world, it also risks breaking the flow of the game by stretching out the story in ways that Valve, with their original game, Half-Life, never intended. However, as PC Gamer said, the redesigns that were done, particularly in Zen, created what they felt to be like a proper closure to the game than compared to the original version. Now that's a bold statement by PC Gamer. So let's see how the team over at the Crowbar Collective did with Black Mesa now that it's finally released. Now, the redesigns of areas for this game absolutely gorgeous in their reimagining of the classic Half-Life sections. The expansions of many of the areas that a lot of us, myself included, have played through ad nauseum back in the day. And these new sections to the game are beautifully redone. So let's compare the office complex with its dark and creepy vibe. On a rail chapter, unnerving and dark and wet, slicked up a bit to make traversing through this section of the game quicker than in the original. Surface tension, which got a much needed massive overhaul from the early access to official launch of the game. And there was two things about surface tension that I absolutely personally enjoyed. And the first one was that there was a small tank battle that you could either stand at the top of the room and just watch it play out, or you could engage and with the fight. It was, to me, it was better just to sit and watch it uh, because there was one thing where you could not destroy the tank, which was a little weird, but it was still a love section. And there was one more that got turned into a hangar, where you have to escort a guard to end the level. And the ending of that scene, to me, made the game feel more realistic, and I absolutely loved that part. Absolutely, they spruced it up. Those tank battles that you mentioned were pretty cool to see. I didn't like the fact that certain things were invulnerable in this game, including tanks that normally you could destroy, but suddenly, magically, you couldn't. But we'll get into that later as we continue along. There was also one other thing I wanted to make mention, and that is the radio calls throughout the game. It was a fantastic idea. It brought more depth to the story and the world around you. For example, the emergency calls throughout helped make the tension more real throughout the game, knowing that the world around you was being affected by what you did in Black Mesa. The following message is transmitted at the request of the New Mexico Department of Emergency Services. At 947 AM Mountain Standard Time, a disaster of unknown type has occurred at the Black Mesa Research Facility. One more thing I wanted to add there was the guns. I felt like the guns were handled better than the original. The added features to the games was a welcome design change. There was minor things here and there with the guns, but for the most part, we'll get to that later. I absolutely liked the changes, especially with machine gun. I personally loved it. It was easier to handle going back and forth through strafing than it was originally, because in the original, it would go up and down versus where I can actually manage it better with the controls now. All valid points. Now, next, the child inside of me could not get enough of seeing classic scripted sequences brought back to life in this modern take. Now, this alone made it a joy to keep playing to find more of these memorable moments and re-experience them with a modern twist. The nostalgia is real on this, so good. And finally, Zen. 
Now here we see the first real attempt from the Crowbar Collective to create a new narrative deviating from the original vision of Valve for Half-Life. The reasoning behind it had everything to do with the controversy Half-Life had received in their original release of Half-Life. The Crowbar Collective team said in an interview with Polygon back in December 2016 that, and I quote, we want our version of Zen to feel like it really belongs with the rest of the game in terms of mechanics, cohesion, and progression. Now while at the same time they wanted to push the boundaries and explore this unique and varied setting to build an experience that feels both fresh and familiar to players from all walks of Half-Life. Life veterancy. So how did this new vision match up? Well, the initial reveal of the game was as close to perfect as I could have hoped for. And when you compare it with the rough landing of the original Zen chapter, you can hardly be blamed for missing Valve's old Zen at this juncture. Now, I should add here that I wasn't one of those who actually hated Zen from the original Half-Life. It wasn't as cool as say the Lambda Complex or Surface Tension, and it had some real awkward initial moments when you first teleported into the alien world. But it still had my rapt attention when I played it all those years ago. Now here in the remake, the local fauna, wildlife, and backgrounds, all done with a lot of care in the process. You can practically feel the tender love and care in the very first sections of the Zen's alien world. It's a testament to the hard work that was put into this game over the last decade and a half. Just look at how gorgeous this really is, especially when compared to the original. Now up to this point in Zen, I was in heaven. Seriously, tons of little details to let those who are curious really absorb each section and imagine what life would have been like for the humans and aliens alike before things went to hell. Utter perfection here. The initial Zen reveal captured the mood precisely as one would hope if you found yourself teleported to an alien world where everything on that planet wants to kill and eat you with the exceptions of maybe the Vortigaunts. This is another section and design choice of the game that deviated from the original design choice by Valve. Although there is one similar moment in the original Half-Life Zen when the Vortigaunts don't attack you unless you attack them first. But here in the Crowbar Collective, we visit a small camp of Vortigaunts. They give us a chance to see how they supposedly live their meager lives under the ruling thumb of the Command cast, the alien controllers, beings that closely resembled the Nihilanth. The village had a sort of sci-fi Native American hybrid feel to it. I can't say I was in love with the design choice here, and it felt it strayed away from what the Half-Life Zen mission was all about from the original game, which was saving the human race, not necessarily playing house with a bunch of Vortigaunts, who apparently aren't coerced by fear to obey the masters, but by mind control. And I disagree with that. I thought they went perfectly showing that the alien controllers were forcefully making the Vortigons do what they wanted against their will at all times. They could make attack people they didn't want to attack. It was perfect. Now, I get where you're coming from. It was cool on one hand, but to me, it kind of felt out of place, even as it also piqued my curiosity. So I want to add one more thing about the Vortigons. Part of the reason that I felt that it matched the game perfectly was that when they were being teleported in, even if the masters were not there, they would still have been killed by the humans. They were mainly just trying to keep themselves alive. When he got to their actual home planet, they didn't know anything about you, they had never met you, they weren't at war, they were just doing their job. So it made more sense that they were not as aggressive if they weren't being forced to kill someone they didn't know. So effectively you're suggesting that in this vision of Half-Life, they were more of a cannon fodder than real soldiers. To a degree, yes. And there is a clip here that shows that the Grunt was actually abusing the Vortigons because the Vortigons were afraid of the Grunts. Now, here comes the beginning of the hate. See, after the Vortigaunt Native American sci-fi camp, this is when things start seriously falling off the rails in Zen. The Gonarch fight, or should I say the extended, never before seen, forever fight scene with a monster that apparently doesn't mind getting blasted by hundreds of rockets, and yet somehow feels the pain of a little boulder that bounces off its head. But wait, there's more. Now the Gonarch magically becomes invulnerable and instead starts chasing you and forces you on this long, dull chase that just seems to go on forever. Now, after this boss fight, it gets worse. 
Because the crowbar collective chose to abandon the flow of the original title Half-Life, we finally see them develop this part of the game without Half-Life as its guide, and it shows. One of the primary reasons Zen takes so long to beat is the endless parade of puzzles. It's often interspersed with little or no combat. The combat and pacing of the previous parts of the game are for the most part abandoned throughout much of the middle section of Zen, in what seems to be an attempt to make sure their audience gets their money's worth. Now, what had made this game so good up until this point was that the Crowbar Collective stuck to the main script given to us by Valve with their interpretation over the top. The genius of Valve's masterpiece as a guiding spirit shines through Black Mesa, its flair. And without it, the game really starts to drag. Now, by the time I reached the final ascent towards the Nihilant's lair, I was sick and tired of having to constantly be solving puzzles. I can't tell you how many times I had to plug in alien power cores. But damn, if I didn't feel like I was playing an alien electrician simulator, rather than a reboot of one of the most recognizable FPS IPs of all time. Now, out of all the complaints I'm about to cover here, Zen's middle section was by far one of the most aggravating. I didn't think it possible, but this made the strange jump platforming decisions that Valve made in the original Zen seem like a brilliant design choice by comparison. Now, I know a lot of hard work went into making this labor of love, but seriously, they really seem to go out of their way to make moving through this section so much more complex than it needed to be. The flow of the game broke down during the stage and killed any replay desire I may have had coming up to this stage. The Crowbar Collective should have taken a step back at some point and asked themselves the critical question, is this fun? Is this what our audience is looking for in a Half-Life remake? Hold up, hold up. So you mean you didn't enjoy the gargantuan chase scene? <laughs> no. The gargantuan chase scene is one of the f***ing things wrong with this game. Seriously, what the f***? First off, I don't know if you people know this, but the Gargantua is killable in the original Half-Life title, but apparently somehow they've drank a potion of invincibility here and they can't die. And of course in this chase scene, it's Gargantua after Gargantua after Gargantua and so on and so forth. Now let's shift gears to the other issues of this game. Tons, and I mean loads, of character model glitches. Body parts going inside themselves galore. This inattention to detail is very sloppy and something that has hounded this mod slash reboot since its inception. I can't understand how they could have missed this, or did they just not care that the model and lighting issues were so painfully obvious throughout the entirety of the game? Well, like the AI. They did not have the time to fix it for release, I'm not sure. There was way too many times that the aliens would literally just stop firing or would just stand there or would walk around in circles or walk back and forth and I'd be like, am I going to be shooting them or are they going to be attacking me or what are we doing? It took a huge chunk of the challenge away from the game. Also the character models that you mentioned, they were off. There was one that I noticed that I kept seeing over and over again was the characters that have like a white light that would go all the way around them. It was just weird. It kept pulling me out. I'm like, why? This was a constant refrain throughout the entire game, and it got old fast. And then, the very odd suspension of disbelief breaking choices in some of the new monsters on Zen. Now, in the world reality that the game has built so far, tentacles would trap and catch anything. Players, humans, monsters alike. It didn't matter. As long as it got caught in the path of the tongue, it would suck them in and consume them. However, as we can see here in this footage, the ichthyosaur is able to swim unmolested through this veritable hive of tentacles without so much as a caress as they swim through. Just one example of a frustrating design choices that pull you out of the realism of the game, something that made the original Half-Life the gold standard upon its release, and here Black Mesa fell off a little bit. And finally, the one thing that Valve was known for was giving its players choice in most scenarios in their game. Only taking away your player choice and the consequences of the actions in rare moments. But here, arbitrary scenes where characters that in the previous installment could have been saved could not in Black Mesa. This became a constant theme throughout my playtime in Black Mesa. It pretty much became a joke, just waiting for some forced, scripted, random death scene of someone I'd saved, 
This to me was a huge mistake, one that killed my desire to ever play through this game again in the future. It felt like my choices mattered in the original Half-Life, and that's what made it the game so special to me. It was all about run, think, shoot, live. Now that's a lot of hate all back to back, but I will say that the game did end on a redeeming note, so ending spoilers here. The boss fight, although different from the original, really kept the spirit in place while making the fight much more fast paced and challenging. I found this to be a welcome change and it left me feeling high as the game came to a close. So final thoughts, bugs and choice theft aside, before you get to Zen's middle section, the vast majority of the look and feel of the game was engrossing. It was a wonderful experience as a whole, and I must congratulate them for the effort. As a lifelong, diehard Half-Life fan, I'm glad to finally get the experience that I've been waiting for for nearly 15 years. So thank you, Crowbar Collective, game warts and all. However, as much as I really enjoyed this game, I cannot recommend it at its current state. The AI is just too broken. As is speaking of what we spoke before, if they fix the AI, then hell yeah. You're right, the AI has very large issues. It does function most of the time, but when it breaks, it, it breaks hardcore. But see, here's the thing. If you really love the original or are curious about getting it, it's just 20 bucks. Go for it, but be, please be cautioned that there's gonna be a lot of issues with this game. So from Adrian's Corner, I'm Adrian, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.